This is the Tabernacle Podcast with John Vermilia and me, Britton Bishop. What's up, John? Buenos dias, <laughs> muchacho. See. Si. Wait, buenos dias. Buenos dias, muchacho. Did si. I say it right? I, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I thought you were raised on the res. No, man. The closest I've ever came to speaking Spanish is the menu at Taco Bell. Oh, snap. <laughs> what is your favorite menu item at Taco Bell? Uh, it's actually no longer currently, on there. But currently. No, currently, it would just be like a quesadilla. Quesadilla? Like a steak quesadilla, yeah. Quesadilla. Yeah. My favorite, It, which which by the way, it, when we introduce our guest, everyone's going to be like, we're the worst human <laughs> beings because I started with Spanish <laughs> and we're talking about Taco yeah. Bell. <laughs> I'm going to be rebuked by my wife. It's okay. But this Sounds is a momentous offended. day because we have our first Mexican, a bad Mexican. First on, international. First international. International guest. On the, well, besides me. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but no, currently at Taco Bell, it's the crunch wrap. Okay. But Taco Bell, no free shout outs. No free shout outs, Taco Bell. Yeah. None. So yeah, Santi, what's up? How you doing, man? As good as a bad Mexican can be. <laughs> so why? <laughs> Please explain to our viewers so John and I don't get. Uh, whoa, 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 wait, wait. wait. Give him all. his full name, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> Santiago you gotta tell- Fuentes. There you well go. Done. There you yeah, go. Absolutely. Now, I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear anything about Taco Bell. <laughs> ah, <laughs> well done. Yeah. yeah. So why would you consider yourself a bad Mexican? Oh, because uh, I don't know. There are so many things I can say about it. Like, I I always like to show up in time, <laughs> unlike the rest of my fellow Mexicans. Wow. <laughs> so that's wow. one. Yeah. Um, I love American football. Uh, sorry, John. That's all right, man. I don't Dallas like. Cowboys. That's all right. Oh, all the way. Yeah. Yes, sir. There's, yes, the, sir. there's the first fist bump of the podcast. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You knew what I was talking about with Roy Williams yesterday, didn't you? Of course. Oh, yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Safety. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I know my game. So you're bad Mexican because you're on time. Yeah. And you said it. We didn't say it. Brit- I, Britain and I, I did say not that. say this. I yeah. Say yeah. Well, I'd rather have American food. You don't like Taco Bell? Well, that is American, I when, guess. Yeah. When when I go on a date with my wife, yeah, it's always American food for me. Wow. Yeah. So what's your wow. fa- now? What's your favorite American food? Brisket. Brisket. Let's go. Brisket. Brisket. Yes, Look sir. At you. Look yes, at sir. You. I took him to last year. We went to Sparks Barbecue in yes. downtown TC on Front Street. So that, that was, was good. good. Yeah, that really was good. really good. Well, no free shout out, Sparks. Why don't you tell him who this guy is? Yeah, absolutely. Santiago Fuentes is uh, a. Seminary professor. Um, he's a husband, a father to Raquel and to Esley, mm-hmm. um, who I'm excited that I get to meet for the first time this uh, this summer. So I'm excited about that. He's a forged speaker, mm-hmm. and uh, he is also a huge spiritual mentor of mine. Um, been a huge part of my spiritual formation, just in in learning and in guidance and stuff like that. One of the most patient men <laughs> I've ever met for having to deal with me. Because when I was going through the Firebrand program, there's always like this homework. Firebrand is the forged speaker training program, and there's this homework you have to do. And I'd always call Santi, and I'd play up the reading disability, right? Which everybody <laughs> on the podcast knows I have by yeah, now. Yeah, and he, but he al- always gracious, sent me cool bar- or, uh, documentaries and stuff to watch. But super gracious dude, extremely gifted communicator, and uh, yeah, a good friend. So thank you. Welcome yeah. to the dungeon, Santi, and a podcast listener. Well, yes, yeah. yes. I don't know how many listeners you have in Mexico. I'm one of those. <laughs> yeah, nice. So nice. yeah, I love nice. it. Sweet. So, dream and, come true to be in the dungeon with you too. Oh, in the dungeon. He even <laughs> yeah. knows the lingo. Yeah. 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 So Santi and mm-hmm. I have been on the same speaking team for a while. And one thing I love about you is every potential like stereotype that you might have about a fellow speaker, you always explode. You <laughs> always just blow them up. Um, this is also, I think, uh, your third or fourth visit to Buckley. Third. I think it's your third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and we were privileged to have you uh, speak at um, our Fight Club the last time you were here, yes. and also this time at yes. our first ever or our second ever Fight Night. Correct. And so, if you are at Fight Night uh, and and you want to know more about the guy, this is the good podcast yeah. to listen to. So he's a brother, he's a friend. I respect you a ton. Thank I've you. learned from you as a pastor, listening to you, watching you, um, uh, you know, with all of our Forge events, deep deep camp, and so forth mm-hmm. and so on. So. Yeah, it's a privilege to have you down here. Thank you. Let me surprise you. I remember you from 1998. You taught us a three-hour class on... That sounds about right. Uh, oh, yeah, I hear you over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apologetics. Oh, yeah. So you did that when I went through a uh, force equipping program mm-hmm. named back then the Laborers Institute. Oh, wow. That was back... That was before I was a Forge speaker. Yes, sir. Wow, that's right. Jim, yeah. your, your brother brought you just like kind mm-hmm. of test the waters. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I right. was like blown away, like... Mm really thought about 
wow, John Vermeule is just mm -hmm. top notch. And I've been following you since. Really? So, yeah. How old were you in 1998? 20. Two. You were. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two. I see you over there, Britain. Oh, I'm feeling froggy. Today. You're I'm feeling sorry, froggy. Guys. Benjamin might have to exercise some of his producer power <laughs> on Britain. I'd like to oh, see that's that go, why we went go to down. Today. But I, I did not realize that. Yeah. Well, I remember. Well. I mean, I remember international students, but it's like now you're like this professional guy. You got the cool sweater thing going on. You got the hair slicked back. You got the wife and the kids. You're, you're a, pro, you're a professor, right. a pastor, a speaker. Right. So yeah, yeah, it's just like, wow. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Cool yeah. session. That's awesome. I remember that. The thing I want to see happen yeah. because I've heard it from both sides now is I need to see the ping pong matchup happen between the two of you. Let's Ooh. go. Are you so, a ping pong player? I am. Santi, okay. tell them what you call your spike that you do on people. The wrath. Oh, you bring the wrath? <laughs> oh yeah. You bring the heat? It's kind oh, of a, I love it. it's mythology ping pong we play with the fire yeah. brands. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Here comes the wrath and yeah. Yeah. slam it. He's well, handling they, people in Adam Sharp's basement. I haven't played, I, I've played ping pong in Adam Sharp's basement and, and, and there's a point to this, right? Oh. So I, I haven't played forever and this is probably two years ago and a bunch of guys from a fight club, we were all hanging out and I had to go. And this guy, I won't tell you his name, but he's a real competitive guy. And, um, uh, you know, he's a little insecure and, um, and his name's Bill Stone. <laughs> Wait, oh, did I just say that? Yeah, no, well, that's what it rhymes with. Oh, it rhymes with Bill Stone. Yeah, yeah it rhymes yeah. with Bill Stone. <laughs> he challenged me to a quick ping pong match and he's like, you can't leave. You got to play me. So I smoked him <laughs> and I hadn't played him forever. And then he was like, oh, my back, my shoulder. Okay, now I'm warm. Let's well, that's play. what happens when we beat him at golf too. hundred percent. So let's play again. And I smoked him again. <laughs> and then he was like, bro, you, I said, man, that's, that's two out of three. He goes, come on, man. Best three out of five. And I said, you want more of this? And he, this is Bill. <laughs> and if, and if you knew who Bill Stone was, you know, uh -huh. or with the, this guy whose name rhymes with Bill Stone. Yeah. And so I smoked him three in a row. <laughs> and then I said, are you done? <laughs> Dude, and I've never uh, given him a rematch. I love never, it. ever, I love ever, it. ever. So praise God. Awesome. Sweet. Well, Santi, we're here yeah. uh, to, for more than just kicking it. We could do this all day long. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I'm, I'm interested more than probably anybody else's. And I, I'm just pumped to know, like, how did Santiago Fuentes, the man that I know, mm -hmm. get to where he is? And so something we do, which you've heard on the podcast, mm -hmm. is this change life stories. Yeah. And so over the next few moments, I just want to just jump in and just take this journey of how God has has brought you to the place you are um, now currently with um, a family and a seminary professor and an international speaker and all mm -hmm. of this stuff, mm -hmm. but as well just as a disciple, um, mm -hmm. as, a, as a follower of Jesus, yeah. um, a local church pastor, yep. um, and so different stuff like that. So yeah, what I guess for the, something with the way we usually start off, actually we're starting it off in a new way, so I need to know some things about you before we all can right. begin. So, Ooh, is he going to run yeah, the gauntlet? Gonna, yeah, he's going to run the gauntlet. Is so, that a mini gauntlet? Yeah, it's the, it. mini it's gauntlet. the mini gauntlet. It's the mini gauntlet. So we're going to start off with a light one, but this lets us get to know you. And right. I don't know how things work in Mexico City with this question, but you had to take a driver's test to get your driver's license, correct? Mm -hmm. What was the car you took your driver's test in? Oh, that was a Renault 5. Okay. Little, th those that look like a baby shoe. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> like a baby shoe. It was shoe. one of Did those. Did you have to parallel park? <laughs> yeah. And I've never heard a car described as a baby shoe. <laughs> I love that. It's just a yeah. tiny thing and, yeah. and uh, you have to use the stick yep. with yeah. it. And, and I mean, it didn't have this kind of uh, soft steering wheel. Mm -hmm. It's one of those that you have to move <laughs> yeah, around like yeah. a truck. <laughs> no power steering. I'm no, I'm no, tracking, nothing yeah. of that. So that was the first one that tells you also something about my age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also did, did my driver test in a stick shift. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But it was a Mazda. Nice. There you yeah. go. Okay. okay. Second question. Mm -hmm. This is good letting people get to know you, right? Mm -hmm. Say you find yourself on death row. Mm -hmm. We don't know why but you found yourself there and you get one final meal. What's the final meal you're choosing on death row? Brisket. Okay. <laughs> all the way. <laughs> brisket all the time. Yeah. Brisket. You got, any sides? I yeah, you got it. any sides. I was thinking, you got any sides? Um, give me some uh, stuffed potato. Mm, nice. And um, listen to us. Mm. Sounds like he's preaching to us. <laughs> <laughs> definitely preaching so, to you. You're so, about to come to the sweet altar. Sweet potato fries. Okay. Oh, sweet yes. Potato fries. I love those. Brisket, yeah. sweet yeah. potato fries. With uh, I don't know. You got me, my mouth watering now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, some some uh, that deep they have in in Colorado, which is uh, maple in in mustard maple. Yeah. Or something oh yeah. Like that. yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. yeah. A little mustard maple sauce. Ready to mm. go see the Lord after that. 
<laughs> and then this last one, I'll let you ask. The, I forget what it was. Okay, never <laughs> yeah. mind. Uh, so I forgot the last this, part of the mini. This gauntlet. question, this question is probably my favorite one because yeah. I I know you well enough to know that this is going to surprise a lot of people. Mm-hmm. What is a band? Oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. You yeah. are ashamed to admit that you love right. listening and singing along to a band that you hate to love. You hate to yeah. admit that you love it. This is yeah. friendly fire here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What is a band that you hate to Queen. love? Oh, Queen. Yeah, Queen. Uh, let's yes, go. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Little Freddie if, Mercury. If you guys weren't recording video, I'd do my Freddie Mercury impersonation <laughs> here. <but laughs> I love it. Sweet. So, yeah, now we know you a little bit so we can jump okay. in. Nice. Um, just kind of for you. So, what was now growing up? Now I think up, I like it more. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know if that was possible. Absolutely. So, growing up, you, were you born um, mm-hmm. in Mexico City? I was born and raised in Mexico City. Still live there. Mm-hmm. That's my mission field so far. Yeah. Awesome. Brothers and sisters. I have two brothers and one sister. All of them are older than me. So, you're the so when they play this card that, yeah, but I got I got all the brains and everything. Yes, dude, but I'm always going to be younger than you. So <laughs> chill out. Love it. So what kind of growing up in Mexico City, what was kind of that like for you? Uh, just kind of in those early years. Yeah. Well, let me share this. I was born on a Tuesday. Sunday, I was at church already. Hmm. That's, where, that's how my, my parents were. We were there for everything. You name it church, uh, uh, choir, um, prayer services, of course, Sunday. And, and on Sunday, we had Sunday school. We had uh, Sunday morning service. We had a uh, second part of Sunday school after lunch and then evening service. <laughs> so we were there all day long. Were they hyper long. Christians or what? Or why was your family so into it? Well, my dad was Just co-pastor, about... first of all. And oh, then okay. on Wednesday, we, we had a prayer meeting. On Thursday, church practice, I mean, uh, choir practice. And then on Friday, we would have a Bible study. And then on, on Saturday, it was um, youth group meeting. Mm. And my dad was uh, one of the counselors there. So I got to be there all the time. Man, I'm just tired just listening about it. I know, right? Yeah. Well, imagine trying to go to school the next day and, and on Monday after all of that and, and listen, um, this may be sound harsh, but but I'm thankful for the parents that God gave me. But now as a father, I think, no, that was way too much. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I needed a break. I was tired every single day at school, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I did not enjoy school at all. Mm-hmm. I think the Lord equipped me to, to uh, endure mm-hmm. all of that uh, and, got, and was the kid that got the good grades and everything but not because I was rested and fresh in the morning. Mm-hmm. I was exhausted. I mean, the other day I was talking to my wife about it, saying, we're not doing this to Wesley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, the, I'm a pastor mm-hmm. and professor and whatever you want to name it, but I'm not doing this to my kid. Mm-hmm. So, so growing up in that environment, you would think, oh, it's going to produce a good Christian. Well, think twice. I was messed up when I was 11. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I was extremely shy. I mean, today I'm surprised I'm talking mm-hmm. still to a microphone because uh, I was extremely shy. One of the most hurt, hurtful things I, I received was growing up with the nickname of The Wall. Mm. Kids would call me that. He doesn't speak. He doesn't do anything. He just sits there and, and watches everybody. Have they call you The Wall? The Wall. Yeah. Because uh, I wouldn't. So you're like a wall, word. you're like an inanimate object that right. didn't speak, didn't right. move, you're just there. Exactly. Huh. So when when I was um, in middle school, that, that really hurt. And it was, I guess that's how I developed this personality that I was a player. Hmm. Started dating too young to date, but started doing that and developed this um, personality of I'm an athlete mm. and, and because I well I received the grace of being good at sports mm-hmm. uh, I was at, at some point I was good at soccer mm-hmm. at some point yeah yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> and basketball and ping pong yeah. and, and, and American football and probably because I played with with older people all the time mm. at church and that developed uh, certain skills on me but I'd use that as a mask. Mm. So, so hiding behind that mask, there was this extremely shy kid who tended uh, towards depression. 
Mm. So when I was the age of 13, 14, I was depressed all the time, all the time. It was my dad who needed to come and sit on my bed and talk me out of depression over and over and over again. Because mm. I, I was living, a, a, you know, just two lives, mm. one in front of people and, and the one that, okay, it's over. I don't need to, you know, keep this charade here. I'm, I can just be myself in my room and, and chill. Mm. But out so there, you felt like a pressure to perform. Yes. Just to be someone time. at church, be someone at school. So at church, you're trying to be the good pastor's kid. It, which right. I was, of course, I was yeah. not dating all the girls in church, <laughs> ah, dating yeah. sisters even, hmm. which was really hurtful. And I'm so, I mean, I not know. Not your sisters. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're good, talking good, two yeah. girls from good. the same family, this yes. sister and then that si sister. Wow. Yeah. At the same time. Wow. So what was, during all that kind of busyness of being everywhere, being exhausted is how you described it, um, with wearing the mask and uh, playing sports and all that. What was that doing kind of with with your relationship with God and all of that? Was that, because you're going to church, you're hearing about it all the time. Was that just kind of like, yeah, that's just kind of the thing we do here. What was that kind of like for you? I was the kid that would have some earbuds and listen to the Dallas Cowboys games while my dad was preaching. Mm -hmm. That tells you how far away from I was from God. Not interested mm -hmm. at all. But the thing is, everybody thought I was a good kid. So they let me play with the worship team. They let me teach some lessons to the teenagers. I mean, I was a good hypocrite. Mm. I was wow. extremely good actor. Wow. Good hypocrite. That's that's a new word, or that's yeah. a new way of putting it. I like. And, that. and unfortunately, yeah. I really was, and everybody thought really highly of me. But I knew inside what was going on, mm. and really, um, I was not happy at all. I mean. If at some point, I guess I had everything a, a kid my age wanted, like dating, easy, uh, sports, some kind of success in sports, easy, and, and getting good grades, easy. But deep inside, I was uh, lonely, unsatisfied, depressed about everything. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the kind of teenager I was. So coming out of those teen years then, mm -hmm. um, like, did you go to college after high school or what did that, did you like leave the parents' house? What did that process look like? Well, it's really weird in Mexico to leave your house to go to college. Uh, that doesn't happen very often because then that would put an extra burden on your family to, to support you elsewhere. So most of us stay home while college years. And yes, I did go through high school and then to college. and. When I was in college is when I became the worst person. I mean, you wouldn't be around me uh, if I was that. Uh, just uh, what I did in, in, in those high school years, but just double it. Mm. Uh, so, so when I was in, in my first year of college, here, here was my plan. I'm going to go through college, get my industrial designer degree, and then make tons of money, get my own apartment, live a life of everything you can imagine. That was my plan. Mm. And while I was in, in college, my first year, my dad, um, who was diabetic, he developed this kidney uh, disease mm. and, and he fell in coma. The first time he was in coma, I was with one of my brothers at the hospital uh, during the night. And, and out of nowhere, I told him, is that a Bible? He said, yeah. And I said, let me read some. I was so desperate. This is my hero. This is my dad who talked me out of depression all the time. He was kind and loving, made me laugh all the time. And with me and my siblings and my mom, I mean, he was a fun guy. Uh, although also introverted like I, like I am. And, uh, and to see him there just made me seek for something. As I was reading the scriptures, I read uh, Mark 5, Jesus walking uh, on the sea, and, and just jumped out of a page. Do not be afraid. Afraid. It is me. It's like somebody 
whispered that in my ears. And I told my brother, have you ever read this? Oh, yeah. And I told him, I think, I think Jesus is behind all this. He's the one that has my dad in the hospital. And he looked at me with the strangest, uh, you know, uh, eyes. And, and so we went on, 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 on our time at the hospital, but I was really moved, like, what's going on here? Well, next day, my dad woke up. And I was like, do you remember what I said? And he was like, well, I wouldn't pay attention to that. Just, you, we don't know. We don't know if daddy is going to make it out of here. Well, two weeks later, he was back home. Hmm. Do you think that would humble me enough to say, oh, Lord, I surrender my life. Guess what? I had daddy back home. I went back to do the same things hmm. I was doing before. So fast forward uh, five months later. This is October 1996. And I'm, uh, I'm at the hospital again. My dad is in coma again. And um, Sunday morning, m my family is getting ready to go to church. And they say, Santi, we got to go to church. And I'm like, nope, not doing that anymore. That God you worship is the, is the guy that has my dad in the hospital again. And, and doctor said, you have, to, you have to come and say bye to him. I'm not doing that church thing anymore. I was really rebellious. For some reason, I showed up at church service because they said they wanted the church to, uh, you know, just comfort us and pray over us, as, as, as they knew already that my dad was passing away very soon. And uh, so I decided to go for whatever reason. And the preacher that day, who was a, a not your regular speaker, he was a guest speaker for that day, uh, at some point in his message, he said, you need to surrender your life to Jesus today. Ooh, that made me mad. I was really, really mad. I did not say bye to anybody. I just ran out of the building, ran back home, which was not far from home, and started kicking furniture, raking windows, raking stuff, Cursing the name of God, blaspheming the name of God, until at a moment I was just like woken up. What am I doing? This is God. Who am I to speak like this to him? Fell on my knees, asked for forgiveness, and said, God, I've wasted 18 years of my life. If you think I'm, I'm still useful, I, I can be of any use. Please forgive my sins and use me in however way you want. That morning, I was uh, God's enemy. That night, I was child of God mm. with a hunger for his word that I just couldn't stop reading. That night, I almost spent all night long reading the scriptures. Hollywood, the happy ending would be, oh, that he came back home and we <laughs> talked about God. Mm -hmm. No, that passed away two days later on a Tuesday. But I was ready. I was ready. Yes, I cried, but not with the desperation that I th thought. I was that kid that would walk, walk into uh, my parents' room, just open the door, see that the blankets were moving so they are breathing. Okay, mm -hmm. I can yeah. go to sleep now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's how the Lord changed my life. And uh, nine months later, I met uh, Dwight Robertson, president of Forge, gave me this book, It's My Turn, and, and just changed my life, uh, reading the Bible and, and knowing that God wanted to use me. Um, so, yeah. Which it's a funny story of how you met Dwight, right? Yeah. Yeah, tell that story. Oh, well, I, I, was, uh, I was fluent in English since I was 14 years old. So they had me translate uh, sermons in complete sermons when I was already four. I mean, I was just 14. Yeah. And so this, uh, here we go again, <laughs> this girl I was dating <laughs> from another church, her pastor said, Hey, bring Santi. He, he's, he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be a help here translating for, for this American team that is coming, uh, for a week. 
So I was supposed to translate uh, Dwight's uh, message on a Sunday morning, but for some reason, unlike me, I showed up late, and and uh, they had another uh, translator, a woman. So uh, I got to sit there uh, to listen to the message. Now, I'm already a Christian by this time, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I got to listen uh, to the whole message, and... It was just, now I, I know the other side of the story. I was just in tears halfway of the message, just knowing, God, you really want to use me. You're pursuing something uh, through me. And, and then um, when, when Dwight sat down, the pastor uh, of the church came to the front. He's with the Lord now, but he, he came and spoke and said, God is calling somebody here. And if, you're, if you feel like God is calling you uh, into full-time ministry, would you please stand up? We would love to pray for you. Now, this pastor never did those kinds of callings, ever. That's what I heard afterwards. And Dwight's side of the story is that, her, that his translator for that morning, this woman said, I cannot continue. God is doing something here. It's too holy for me to say it. I need you, Dwight said. You're my voice in Spanish. You, you need to go through the message with me. And so in tears, she continued the message. So it was just a, a powerful moment at that place that morning. And so when I'm, I'm walking out of the building, I, I feel somebody touching, tapping on my shoulder, look around, and, and it's Dwight. And he says, can I talk to you? And I was like, yeah, of course, after that message, I want to listen to everything you want to say. And he said, you probably want to go through a full-time seminary, four years or something. We don't have that. We have this program called the Laborers Institute, where mm -hmm. I met you, John. That's right. And, and, uh, and he said, I would love for you to pray over this and, and see if you can come. And so that's how we hit it off, stayed in touch. Wow. Next year, did the Laborers Institute. Met John, met wow. Jim, your brother. Yeah, brother Jim. He was my leader yeah. with Emily, his yeah. wife. He's a professor now too. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So, He's way smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how it all started. Uh, when I came back home from TLI to Mexico, people wanted to hear about this kid that went, to, went on a mission trip to Thailand. Hmm. And so I went there, share about Thailand and the need for the gospel there. And surprisingly, they wanted me back, but this time not to speak about Thailand, but about whatever. And that's how I started uh, going preaching. around places wow. and preaching mm. when I was just 19 years yeah. old. So 19. So when oh, hold on. 20 years old. 20. So, so as part, sorry if I no, insert good, something good. right here. If there's, uh, for, for those listening, a, a part of the Laborers Institute, which is now called the Experience, is an international portion. Mm -hmm. So you had training mm -hmm. in Denver, Colorado with mm -hmm. a bunch of different speakers, mm -hmm. not just me, not just Dwight. There was a bunch of, and Jim, yep. there was a bunch of others as well. Um, and then it was like a full contact discipleship experience yes. that included, the capstone is t taking you uh, and all the students on this mission trip to mm -hmm. Thailand. And mm -hmm. so that's what you were speaking to the church yes. in Mexico Thank about. you for clarifying yeah, that. Yeah. Yes, because that, that was part of the Laborers Institute back right. then, this uh, one month <laughs> mission trip. And, and I mean, how many kids in Mexico go to Thailand, hmm. Hmm. to be honest with you? I was like, these guys must be really special because he went to Thailand. Wow. Well, it's just that the economics of my country mm -hmm. are different and not a lot of people get to travel uh, international, let alone overseas. Hmm. So, yeah. so you were 20 when mm -hmm. you got back mm -hmm. from the Laborers Institute, mm -hmm. kind of your first... Uh, ministry training, doing yeah. missions and stuff like that. And then you started traveling and speaking. What was kind of your first, when you're getting into speaking, uh, mm -hmm. what was kind of your first event? What did that look like as you were starting that kind of journey? I, I remember clearly it was an event, a, a night of prayer, and they had me speak about 1 a.m. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure how it went because <laughs> there was a lot of people falling asleep. I, I can tell you that. I remember that. Yeah. But, uh, but it was really, um, for me, it was um, really special just to say, hey, guys, the Lord did it with me. He's waiting for you to join him in whatever he wants to do. So 
I, I guess that helped a lot of people open their eyes. Yeah. And, and it was, probably you remember this, John, because back in the day, there, there was the Joshua Project oh, yeah. and so much talk about the 1040 window. Yep. And so a lot of people were actually thinking about those things and, and those places, those dark places. And I guess that encouraged a lot of yeah. people to say, hey, we can pray, we can give. And if not, not all of us can go, some of us should. And uh, I'm not saying it was because of me. Uh, I think I was just part of a, the big picture of what God was doing. And and nowadays you can hear about many Mexican missionaries uh, overseas in, in the 1040 window. So, Yeah, because that's something John and I have both talked about, I think, on here on the podcast was kind of that first moment when we preached for the first time. And it mm-hmm. was like, I'm doing what I was designed to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I found it. Yeah. Going through all the the past of like wearing the masks and who am I and what am I going to do and then finding yeah. that niche. So it was just, I was interested to hear what yeah. that looked like. So you get back from the Labor's Institute, you're starting to travel and speak and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what did that kind of look like for you c- career wise? What were you, what was your, what was your plan at that point? Well, I made a promise to my dad on his deathbed that I would get my college degree, although I would just use it to kind of hang it on the wall. <laughs> Because I was going to go into <laughs> yeah. full-time ministry. But what I didn't know is that I, I started my college degree at this particular university, Mexican National University, ended up finishing my college degree at the Metropolitan University. And you would think, oh, so you messed up. You have to change and switch schools. No, I think it was God's plan because these other university, uh, they are specialists on training you uh, to be a researcher. Mm. So my college degree is on industrial design. I'm an industrial designer and a researcher, professional researcher. So that means um, they gave us the skills. They give us all the skills to read books, compile the information, turn it into something else, Mm. organize it. And that's what we do for preaching. That's what we do for a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my sermon prep that yeah, I got to finish go. today. Yeah. Exactly. So when I went to to seminary, the kind of seminary that I that I went to, uh, Word of Grace Bible Seminary, in which I'm professor today, we do those things. So mm-hmm. it was. Uh, I don't want to diminish the effort of everybody, but it was kind of easy peasy for me because mm-hmm. I did it for years in college, and now I'm here dealing with less books than I had in college mm. and, and, and not as long papers that I needed to write as in college. So, mm. so along the way yeah. you meet, uh, someone named Raquel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did that go down? Oh man. I still remember I was playing the piano. Uh, oh, he plays the piano. See, he's just showing off now. He's, he's yeah. Got it he's all. Just speaking oh, well. all these languages. <laughs> Come on. All, <laughs> All I got is Buenos Dios, muchacho. He's right. the ping pong champ. And he's yeah. playing piano. <laughs> All right. I, no, I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing. Well, yeah. I, so you're playing the piano. Yes, for what church. What were you playing? Oh, in, like a worship song. This is a church service. Okay. And yeah. my mind got distracted from the Lord yeah. to see an angel there at the door. Whoa. Yes, sir. There she was wearing this uh, uh, black uh, uh, blouse and and just uh, i don't know she's gonna kill me when she hears this but <laughs> she was wearing this this uh hat with a big flower because it was yeah. in style back then yeah yeah and nice. so i was like whoa who is she you know and so we got to we got to talk a little bit not much because i was a youth pastor mm-hmm. at that point you listening Britain? so i'm, I'm listening <laughs> that how you met hope she huh? She have, little, a, little she, different. Have a, she have a big hat with a flower? <laughs> a little bit different than that. <laughs> so, Sorry, Santi. I, no, that's fine. I, I needed to, you know, just yeah. be careful with everything. Mm-hmm. And and first of all, we, we became friends. That's mm-hmm. not, um, that's not uh, unfamiliar in Mexico to mm-hmm. be friends for a long time before you date. And so we were friends for like two years. And, and I liked her, yes, but I did not see her as a potential uh, wife or mm. girlfriend at first until I had a car in, in, in after church on Sunday, Sunday night, many of the, the students needed a ride back home. She was one of those. And, and I was like, man, I just dropped her off. I'm not going to see her until next Sunday. 
And I was mm-hmm. like, what in the world? Why am I thinking these things, you know? <laughs> and so it became like, no, I need to spend some time with her, ask her out. She said yes. And uh, eventually we started like officially uh, Where was you guys? What was you guys' first date? <laughs> oh, man. That was going to the movies to watch uh, the movie uh, Tigger. From Disney, yeah. Oh wow, Tigger. yeah. Because that's her favorite character. Okay, so yeah. so it was like perfect. Awesome. So, nice. Yeah. Did you take her to get brisket? No, uh, that came years <laughs> later. It came years later. And she she likes all of the spicy and stuff like that. That's the opposite of you guys, right? Yeah. yeah. She eats so much spicy food. I cannot handle it at all. <laughs> She's just so different from like that's awesome. From like I am. So yeah, started dating. What what did the, so you guys dated? Got married. Yes. Obviously. So, how long did you guys date for and stuff like that? Well, it's not also uh, uh, really uncommon in Mexico to date for a long time, and we dated six years. Hmm. And after those six years, uh, here's here's a funny thing, or well, not funny, but really special. Um, her her engagement ring, I got her from that engagement ring with all the. Love offerings I collected from speaking. Same. Those were really yep. <laughs> okay. So, so you know what I mean. It was like very special because because when I proposed, she said yes, mm. and and then next day when I when I talked to her on the phone, I told her I need to tell you something. You know what I'm going to be for the rest of my life, and it's a faith journey, mm. and you're you're welcome to say and have second thoughts and say no. Uh, so think about it. And to my surprise, she did her homework. She interviewed pastor's wives and missionary wives mm. and women in ministry. And and I was like, I was getting scared. Like, <laughs> oh man, they're going to talk her out of this. And no, she came back and said, no, I'm in, I'm in with you mm. on this. So really special. She's, of course, she's got that ring still. And, and um, she remembers mm. this came from all your preaching around for, over a year, so it's awesome. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. So, how long until? Uh, and that's actually one of the questions that I wrote down here. Esley was yeah. born, and there's a whole miraculous story. I mean, there's there, there's a story of God's faithfulness, yes. um, and and with some struggle. So, yeah, tell us about your daughter. Well, we, first, when we got married, we thought about having uh, some time for us, maybe a couple of years. We didn't know that ministry and life would have a different plan because on year three of our marriage, it was just turbulent. So kind of put it on the back burner for some time. That time became three years where we didn't think about kids because there was so much Mm -hmm. going on in ministry and in life with our uh, families. And so when we uh, said, okay, let's try to have a kid, that didn't happen. And didn't happen for years. And I'm sure in America is the same in Mexico. Yeah. Fertility clinics are just mm-hmm. very, very expensive. So we could not afford those things. So we, we ended up going to this doctor and that doctor, but not really specialist on, on, on that. Uh, we got to the point where I was the one who, uh, who was having uh, the most issues to have mm-hmm. babies. Mm-hmm. They said it was like 80-20. Mm-hmm. They, one doctor said, she's easy to fix. You're not. And one particular doctor w- got to the point where she said uh, to my wife, if you want to have babies, find another man. This wow. guy is not useful for that. Just like that. Of course, we did not come back uh, to that uh, doctor how devastating again. is that for a man? <laughs> yeah, and, and those things, John, and and I don't, I don't want to uh, go in a pity party party here, mm-hmm. but but I know there are some men out there that may relate to this, mm-hmm. and those things really hurt your 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 brain, yeah. your yeah. mind, what you think yeah. of yourself, and and here I am, uh, not able to properly. Uh, provide for for some time for mm-hmm. my wife doing all kinds of things yeah because you're in ministry <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. exactly trying to do all kinds of things to make ends meet and then i'm not even able to give her a child mm-hmm. and this is the, the time when all of our nephews and nieces are being born mm-hmm. and i have to give glory to god because because through all this 
he sustained us in content. Mm. We were content. Yes, there, there were dark, cloudy days where we were like really sad and depressed about it. But the Lord took us out of there really fast. I mean, when we fell in, into those pits, he would show up somehow mm. just to give us a contentment. And one day my wife said, Santi, I, I think God doesn't want to give us a baby because he knows I'm not going to be a good mother. Oh, wow. I was like, honey, hold on. That is just not it. And so we would help each other, mm. you know, throughout that stretch of seven years trying to... Wow have babies. So one day I'm coming back from speaking elsewhere and, and, uh, she, she had to do, uh, she, she they ran some test. She, she felt some pain on her, on the right side of her, her body. And, um, one of the doctors in our church said, we need to take out your gallbladder now. This could be even cancer. So we need to move fast on this. So as I'm coming back home, uh, she receives me with this news. Uh, I may have cancer. We need to move fast. Wait, I'm just dropping this suitcase, grabbing another one because I'm on the road again tomorrow. And so we uh, ended up going to the doctor. There's this hospital in Guadalajara, Mexico, uh, for pastors. And so we went there and, and pre-surgery uh, tests, they do that. And the doctor says, oh, here's a perfect egg. If you want to get pregnant, today is your day. And, and my wife was like, take out my gallbladder and we'll talk about babies later. You know, <laughs> this might be cancer. Yeah. And so they performed the surgery and everything. We went back to Mexico City and, and uh, at this um, government-funded clinic, uh, fertility clinic, uh, we were attending uh, really cheap prices, mm -hmm. uh, they needed a, a pregnancy test. So she did that. Talk her into it. She didn't want to. She said it's too painful to see it negative all the time. So I had to talk uh, with her, and she finally did it, came, came out positive. We were like, no, this has to be wrong. Maybe it's a, you know, it's a brand. It's not a good brand. We'll try it again tomorrow. Let's get another brand of, of pregnancy test. She did it next day and came out positive again. Went to the fertility clinic. They did an ultrasound and they said, you're pregnant. What in the world? And, and do you know how long? Well, apparently about six uh, weeks. But we just, they just performed surgery on me two weeks ago. Wow. And, and you go from happiness to concern. Oh, what if they hurt the baby? And we've been waiting for this baby for so long. But So she was pregnant when the, when the gallbladder came out. Yes. No idea. Wow. Ashley was in there already. So mm. it wasn't an egg. It was her baby. Mm. And so when Ashley was born, uh, doctors run all kinds of tests just, just because they knew about the surgery. Mm-hmm. And praise God, she's perfectly fine and healthy and growing up so fast <laughs> and, and growing up bilingual, just like you were yeah, yeah. growing yeah, up, yeah. you know? So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, praise God. He, he sustained us through us all. Yeah. And, and probably there is somebody out there. Uh, I cannot guarantee a happy ending like mm -hmm. ours. Because mm -hmm. I was sick when, when everybody said, oh, but the Lord will give you a baby. You'll see. And I was how do you know? Yeah. What if not it, necessarily? No. Yeah. What if it, yeah. What if that is not his plan for us, and he has a different type of happiness for my wife and I, and it's not like other people's happiness. Right. So I'm not saying, uh, please don't listen my words. Saying, oh, the Lord has a happy ending, and you'll know because we don't know. Mm. What I know is that in those dark days, God always showed up either through my wife, another brother mm. in Christ calling and, and giving us just uh, comfort, or maybe directly through his word, mm. something we, we read together. Even a worship song would lift us up in those moments. Yeah. So please don't think I'm, I'm saying uh, it's going to be a story like ours, because I don't know. Mm. Yeah. But, but the Lord is going to show up somehow.
I'm, I'm so glad you said that. And you said that with such a pastor's heart too, which is mm-hmm. something I've always appreciated. Mm-hmm. You're always aware mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, how, how you're being perceived. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what I didn't hear you say either is, oh, the Lord finally gave us a baby mm-hmm. when we were okay with not. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, no, we were still in the middle of the up yeah. and the down and the same way your father would sit on the edge of your bed, you said, when you were in those deep, dark, depressive times. Yes. It's like now your heavenly father's providing mm-hmm. that same encouragement because, you know, we, we talk a lot, Brit, Britain and I do about uh, uh, men's, men's identity and not mm-hmm. just men, but women, but because we're men, I think we get that right. more, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's hard to, to take those hits mm-hmm. and, and, and we all have like wounds from childhood because there's a core belief for so many men that you're not enough. Yeah. Right. And that, that comes from the father of lies mm-hmm. that in this er- area, whether it's home improvement, athletics, grades, relationships with mm-hmm. girls, with whatever, it's the enemy is the accuser and the liar. And that's why I reacted that way mm-hmm. when a doctor, I mean, you, you've lost your father mm-hmm. who, who, who got you through mm-hmm. um, your elementary years and your junior high years and into high school. And then to hear, you know, this trained physician go, hey, you know, to your wife, if you want to get pregnant, find another dude. Yeah. I mean, how, I mean, it could only be God that didn't send you completely into the tank as far as your identity is concerned. Yes. And, and keep in mind that that is something that I, that I struggled through my childhood and teenage years. Because mm-hmm. besides that, and it's not his fault, but one of my older brothers, he's got this huge personality. Uh, he enters the room and owns it. Mm. He's the funny guy. He's the charismatic guy. Mm. He's the great preacher. He's uh, he's, he's everything. He's not a wall. He's no. He's not all. the wall. At yeah, all. yeah. So so uh, you're always thinking, am I supposed to be that? Because mm. I don't have it in me to be that. Yeah. And and it took some time for me to accept the fact that I'm never going to be that. Yeah. And but still, God wants to use me. Yeah. And and he designed me the way that I am, and and I know for a fact that the I'm that guy that actually reads the footnotes, yeah, on, on the pages of the books, <laughs> and I'm interested in the the fonts where where they got their thoughts. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm that kind. I'm of a fellow guy. nerd. Yeah. 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 So so uh, that mind that seeks for precision mm-hmm. is a mind that God has used for training others. Mm. And, mm. and, and be aware of, you're saying this, but it can be taken this way. Yeah. Mm. And, and I'm not that other person that is reckless and, mm. you know, be, being funny and, and throws things out there, however people, people will perceive it. Mm. So I'm different. I have a different shape, mm-hmm. but still part of a puzzle. Yeah. So. yeah. so what would you say to maybe the guy or the girl that's listening to this that's kind of in that? space Mm -hmm. with identity is in that space of who am I? Why am I not that? How would you speak to that individual that might be listening that's struggling with that identity of comparison or whatever that looks like? Well, just take a look at uh, what the scriptures say about God uh, needing, putting us together in it with purpose. I could not see myself doing what I do. And during TLI, we did this quiz about uh, gifts, mm-hmm. spiritual gifts, yep. and personality. Yeah. And guess what? You're going to be a preacher, but you have the personality for not being a preacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so I was sitting there really crying, saying, did I mess up this thing? So it, the personality saying introvert, uh-huh. not a preacher. The gifts test is saying absolutely a preacher. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and so right. I'm there crying my eyes out saying, God, what are you doing? Steve Moore was leading that session. And, and I was like, mm, I want to talk to him about this. But all I could think of was my power will show up through your weakness. Mm. To me, it's not, it's, I'm nervous uh, when I'm off stage waiting for my turn. I'm not nervous when I'm up there. Mm. But I know it's not me, it's Jesus through me. Mm. So what I would say to those uh, listening who are struggling with self-image and, and can God really use me or, or am I just, you know, second-class Christian? I'm not supposed to be here. I would say, no, no, no. Uh, maybe not under the spotlight, 
but God has a plan for you mm. the way that he designed you. Uh, for instance, uh, look, at, look at me in, in, in the journey that the Lord took me through. Uh, I, was, I was really set up to be uh, like a, a seminary student at this other a seminary because uh, they saw in me some things and, and, the, and the president of the seminary was inviting me constantly to join that seminary. But I needed word of grace. Hmm. Why? Because I'm a self-learner. Hmm. I hmm. get bored if somebody stands up and starts talking all the time. I'm like, hmm. oh, whatever. You know, yeah. I could have read that <laughs> yeah. in a book. So yeah. give me the book and yeah. let's go. You know, but, but the Lord led me to this other college where you need to be a self-learner to succeed hmm. and to this seminary where you need to be a self-learner. So God has created us with a purpose, even in those things that we don't understand about us, about ourselves. Hmm. God has a purpose behind everything. So See, I, I love that story, and I didn't know that about you, that, that, because it, it's so black and white, it's so cut and dry. Hmm. Uh, you're taking a personality test mm-hmm. and you're taking a spiritual gift mm-hmm. test and they don't match. And so I'm, I'm starting to see a trend. It doesn't always happen this way, mm-hmm. but it seems to happen this way a lot with God. So I'm imagining um, what you had to learn is reliance. Mm-hmm. Santi had to learn to rely on God to bridge the gap mm-hmm. between my gifting and my personality yeah. or, or my talent and what God's called me to do. And mm-hmm. it's like, wait, I don't have a talent for this at all. And see, I think sometimes we mistake our talent mm-hmm. for our spiritual gift, whereas I think sometimes it's our spiritual gift is something that we could only do with God's help. Mm-hmm. We could, I mean, he may utilize our talent. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking of my own story, like, like being a young man. Um, when, when I was that age, uh, my stuttering mm-hmm. was a lot more pronounced. As a child, it was very pronounced. Mm-hmm. Um, and so here I had a lot to say, um, but I didn't have the mouth to say it. Mm-hmm. My mouth couldn't keep up with my brain, and to a certain extent, it still can't, right? Mm-hmm. Well, how is God going to bridge that gap and turn this guy into a preacher? Because I, I had people telling me I was going to be a preacher, and I'm like, I'm never going to be a preacher. Don't put a microphone in my face. Mm-hmm. Because one-on-one, if we're bros, you're not going to make fun of me for stuttering. But if I'm stuttering into a microphone in front of thousands— uh, that's not going to go well. And I, that was one of the reasons that I ran. Mm-hmm. But then I can give glory to God to say, you know, like Moses here. I mean, I'm not comparing myself to Moses except for the fact that I, I'm slow of speech. I'm, I'm a stuttering person. And so it's the same thing. It's like, here's the personality. Here's the gift. Yeah. God gets the glory in that midst. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I don't want to point out yours, Britain, but it, it's also you, none of us at this table should, right. should, should be preachers. <laughs> no, for based, sure. Based mine, on those I mean, things. Like, I mean, obviously the podcast listeners have seen it by now, but like I legitimately have a reading. Like I can't read, I'm not good at it, but by God's grace, I have never once uh, to date had a moment on stage where I was like, I can't continue reading this. I have no idea what this says. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's, that was a huge fear of mine mm-hmm. when I was getting into this idea. It was like, that's why I fell in love with storytelling so early because at the beginning it wasn't a tool. Mm-hmm. It was a, a blankie. Yeah. Right. St- me telling the scripture meant I didn't have to read it. Right, right. And so, but now I've became comfortable. And I think coming here actually pushed me into that as well. Cause like mm. the other day, I was like, you're going to read 71 verses. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, I toned it down. Yeah. But, but that, but that's a very similar experience as well. It's just this idea that, man, like, but God can do it. You and know, it's not. You know, you know, the weird thing though about, about you, Britain, and, and I'm saying this with one of your mentors sitting right across from you is, the way I remember your story, both the way you shared it on the podcast, but also the way you've shared it in my basement or when we're hanging out or whatever, is that you were never interested in reading. You struggled with reading. There's a little bit of dyslexia going on. So therefore, you weren't interested in it. But yeah. what I see in you, and this, go, again, we're giving glory to God. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a, sim- a similarity in the stories, mm-hmm. is you're passionate about reading the Bible. 100%. And, and it's almost like there's a there's that part of your brain that comes alive when it has to do with the Bible or reading about the Bible or reading about preaching. And it's like, so when I hear you say, oh, I don't read, I'm, I'm, I'm no good at that. And I'm like, you're one of the greatest wordsmiths on our team. Like he can put together a sticky phrase 
I mean, for the tab listeners, I mean, if there's anything I've said in the last two and a half years that's been sticky on stage, it's probably because I saw Britton in the hallway and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to say this. How do I say that and be hip with the kids? <laughs> and, and, and he'll just throw something down. But all of this is to bring glory to God, not yeah. to bring glory to Britton well, or to Santi or to John. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like if the person's listening and they have that calling or they have that passion, or they know that, that God is asking for their yes. We always mm. come back to yep. that. Mm -hmm. But then they're hung up on their thing, mm -hmm. you know, their their fear or their personality or whatever they're holding on to as a blankie. It's like living this faith journey. is let, Watch how God's going to bridge the gap between those two things, because yeah. that's the story of characters throughout the whole Bible. And going along with that and giving glory to God, as, as we're doing here, I have to say, one day I got an invitation from a very big church to become their pastor. Hmm. And and keep in mind that the church that I pastor uh, is not that big of a church, um, and this was few hundreds who who were asking me to come and be their pastor. And and as I was praying and thinking about it, I mapped out all the all the Bible verses that have been meaningful in my Christian life, and I noticed the pattern. Trust me, hmm. all of them have to have to deal with faith and trusting God. So for a shy guy who is uh, constantly uh, put in front of people to speak, God whispers continually, just trust me, trust mm. me. What you're saying mm. is not on you. I, I will show up and I have to trust that every time. And I have to trust that tonight the Lord will show up as I speak to this bunch of men in, in the bring the word to them, mm -hmm. I need to trust God every single step. So for those listening, it's not about you. It's never mm -hmm. been about you. It's That's about good. God. Yeah. No, and I love what you said just about that. And and in my weakness is is the, where he's the strongest. And I think that that takes, it takes a level of humility that I think is hard for people to get to um, at times. It's really hard for me to get to. So I'm not saying like, hey, everybody out there, like <laughs> for me, it's really hard to step into that humility of like, I'm going to put myself in situations where I am going to be the visibly weak one, mm -hmm. where there's no way I could control the outcome unless God shows up. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a huge piece of, I think, what we see with Paul um, in Scripture and different things like that. What I see from your story is I'm going to put myself in situations where the only way this is going to work is if God shows up. Yeah. And I'm going to continuously trust God that when I walk into those situations, he's either going to show up or I'm going to learn something. Mm -hmm. Right. And what I loved about what you said to the to the people about um, and it might not look like this, but mm -hmm. in that there's still that perspective of but God still shows up in those moments. It just might not look like what you want it to look like when God shows up. Mm -hmm. And so I just love the humility that I hear from you, especially. And then I've continuously heard from you over the years. Uh, just your your heart uh, towards being a follower of Jesus is just a very humble outlook. So and, and for me, it's a joy to see others follow God's will and know that the Lord somehow used me to encourage them to do that, like having you here across the table and knowing that you're serving in this particular church and that, that uh, has high expectations for the preaching of God's word where you have a great mentor here. And I'm not just throwing mm, things no. out there because you know, and I've told you, I've looked up to you for 24 years now. And, and just knowing that you're here, that's going to take you, uh, you know, to a well, higher you were level. There. You, yeah. were the per you prayed with me before I flew out here to interview for this job. No one, know. No one knows that but you that. and me. Yeah. I know. Right. I, me and Santi, we sat down for a meal and I said, hey, I'm going to go do this. And I don't know what's going on, Santi, but he's like, yeah. well, let's talk. And we talked and we prayed and it was, you were a huge part of supporting that uh, decision so that nobody knows about. Dang, <laughs> we got to get Santi on the payroll over here. <laughs> he's praying us uh, new st student ministry pastors in here. And, 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 and something that I, I think would be uh, worth sharing is, when I first knew that the Lord had called me, I thought it would be related to music mm. and some kind of preaching involved. Mm. And then the Lord refined that into more preaching. And I did a ton of preaching. I was um, a, a keynote speaker for the Baptist House of Publishing for 10 years. So I got to travel with them mm. all over uh, my country. And, and then one day, uh, after doing a ton of, of speaking for a summer, like four nights uh, a week for six weeks. Wow. 
uh, I I got back home exhausted Talk after about reps <laughs> after <laughs> my my last event and just sat on my my bed and and started crying. I was just exhausted. And my wife walked in and said, "Did you get mug? What happened? Are you okay?" <laughs> and I was like, "Honey, I'm exhausted. I cannot keep on doing this. We need more people out there." So we prayed uh, to the Lord that He would send more uh, speakers. Uh, and uh, fast forward one year, and the, and the director, the uh, president of Word of Grace Bible Seminary, says, "Our faculty and our board want you to be one of our faculty members. Would you be interested in it?" Of course, I want to train up men to do this. Wow. That's and, cool. Uh, three years later, Dwight Robertson, president of, uh, of Forge, and, and Todd Bright, uh, CFO for Forge, they call and say, we have many candidates on our list, but you're the top one. Would you consider this position to train up the next generation of itinerant speakers? So I said, well, let me pray. You know, the yeah. Christian, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, let me pray <laughs> over oh, let me pray with my that. wife. Yeah, and, yeah. But you're hanging up going, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I know what he's going to say. <laughs> and so I was praying with my wife one day, and this is before Esli, of course. And in the middle of my prayer, my wife opens her eyes and says, Santi taps my shoulder. Santi, do we even need to pray for this? Mm-hmm. You've been waiting for this opportunity for years. And this is in your heart. You were crying over this a few years ago. Why don't you just say yes? And that was like, oh, yeah, I'm so dumb. <laughs> you know? That's why God gives us wives. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so to remind us that we're dumb. So right. the calling in my life, ha- I think, has been refined mm-hmm. uh, through time and, and made more specific. And, and, and I'm supposed to be on the sidelines cheering for others that I help uh, get trained up for ministry, particularly into itinerant and speaking and preaching ministry. And I'm old enough and I've been teaching all, uh, time enough to have some students circle back, like Edgardo the other day just called and said, Pastor, I was living in, in Chiapas and, and, well, I don't know how to say this, but, um, and he was hesitating, just say it, man. He said, well, I've been using your notes to teach other uh, preachers here in Chiapas. I hope you're okay with that. Come on, you're reproducing that. that that's that's awesome. what, what, what yeah. I want. Well, now that I'm moving to Playa del Carmen near Cancun, uh, uh, can I use your notes? Of course you can. <laughs> you know. So, so it's a joy to see hmm. uh, those that I've been part of their training just doing yeah. ministry here and there and, and cheering from the sidelines and rejoicing in your victories. Oh, I rip so. you off all the time. All <laughs> yeah, the time but that's I multiplication yeah. too. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, I mean, to think about, you know, there's, there's pastors in both of those cities just through that one former student, right? Mm-hmm. That you may never meet. Mm-hmm. And, and they're being influenced by the guy that's really good at reading and compiling and <laughs> presenting, right? right. And, and it's, it's just, it's always amazing to me how God puts the pieces on his chessboard exactly where he wants yeah. them. Mm-hmm. And at least for me, I fought it forever. And then when I finally did the thing that I said I would never, ever do, it's like, I don't want to do anything else. Man, I hope I get to do this forever. Yeah. You know? For sure. Yeah. And I I mean, I think back to my own story, too, as we're just reflecting through all this. And it's like, man, like how chess pieces, like we're talking about, like Mm -hmm. if if God doesn't place you with the knowledge that you have and your ability to compile information and understand things and then represent it to people, I probably— don't go through the program because mm-hmm. there's not a patience. There's not. And so just those pieces of you, I mean, for the lack of a better term, holding my hand for two years <laughs> through the information pieces. Cause you saw something yeah. that other people were like, yeah, but you have to do all this other stuff. But you were very like, you can do this piece and this stuff we'll figure out. So let's just, but there was just a cool piece of that where you use that gift that God had given you. And you were, a, you're very, a huge gift that you have is you're able to specialize information to the individual. Mm-hmm. And so you're not like a, this is exactly how it has to be taught to every single person in the room, but God has gifted you to take in all that information and then you can present it. And what I've seen is 10 different ways to 10 different people that need to hear it 10, 10 times. And so I think that's a really cool gift that you have as well. You guys say it uh, many times on this podcast, but it's the, the yes, sir. Hmm. is the saying yes. What I saw in you was yes, sir. We saw a, a 
we talked on the phone and then we sat over lunch at deep camp and all i heard was yes sir yes sir I went back to my my yeah. bedroom and told my wife I just met with a kid that keeps keeps calling me sir. And <laughs> I don't know. Oklahoma I, manners makes me yeah, sound like yeah. a coach or something. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But that yes, sir, is what qualifies. Mm. It's not the special skills, mm. not personality. Yeah, it's just saying yes to God. Mm. Just it's yes, sir. That qualifies everybody in the scriptures. Yeah, and that qu keeps qualifying people today. Mm -hmm. Just say yes. Mm. I did not want to go to that college. Believe me. Because it's different. It's not the same approach to industrial design. But God had a plan mm -hmm. behind that. Because I needed to develop those skills for what, I, what I'm doing in ministry as, as a pastor, seminary professor, and firebrand director for Forge. I needed those skills that were provided by non-believers. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. He's got way more jobs than I do. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I can barely juggle this. It one. starts making me think of how I'm going to rename my hobbies to make it sound like I have a job. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the director of uh, golf I'm, swinging operations. I'm, at, the, uh, I'm the I'm lead I'm the lead pastor of girls varsity soccer, yeah. in the spring, and I'm the director of you know, boys in fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, Santi, thank you, man. I appreciate thank it. You, is guys. there a I don't know. I just, from my perspective, just what I heard was just there's a huge humility in following Jesus. There's a there's a piece of of, of of following Jesus that is not my will, but your will be done, and trusting that God's will is better than ours, mm -hmm. and that ultimately along the way He's going to open the doors and close the doors that He needs to close, and and He's going to show up and He's going to provide the things that He needs to provide, or He's not. And what I see in you is this perspective of, and I'm okay with it because I trust His heart. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really cool. So I just appreciate you, man. I appreciate your ministry. Thank you. Um, you're awesome. You Thanks. really are. So, but I still got questions. Absolutely. But we can, but we can do them quickly. Rip away. But there's, but there's just this isn't a gauntlet. This, I mean, you already did the mini gauntlet. Okay. But these are just so. But hold on. It, it, yes, go let for me, it. Let me thank the Tabernacle family for having us four here again, and putting up with us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, seriously, you guys have been uh, as a family, church family, have been extremely. Uh, generous to us we love it here we love it this is a fun church to to be at mm. uh, let me put it that way it's yeah. a fun <laughs> church to be at so. well thanks for Thank saying you. that because we can get in our bubble and just mm. see our issues and our problems yep. and go to this church and then and then you realize when someone goes hey oh hey that's cool so doing yeah. amazing things here amazing well, been a blessing things. for us as well yeah. so. Thank you. uh what i wrote down here is what do americans in your view misunderstand the most about mexico Let's just have a little, let's just wave the tricolors there for a minute. Mm -hmm. and, and because I know you love your people, you love your country, yeah. and you also love a lot about this country. You love, you're, you're, you're ultimately loyal to a king, mm -hmm. but just what do Americans misunderstand the most about Mexico? Or is this like a stereotype that, yeah, well, you got to quit with that. That, that we are a, a, a uh, family that has a strong value. I mean, that we're a nation that has a strong value on family. Mm. I think that's ha that has been misunderstood so many times because it's not that we love so much each other, we want to stay together. It's just that we cannot afford to live on our own until we're very old. Mm. I okay. know uh, college kids in America that own their own places. Mm. I don't own my own place. Mm. And I know a ton of people that have lived or still live with their parents. Mm. Because they cannot afford better. Mm. And that was my case for many years. Interesting. So it's not that we want to stay together. It's that many of us have to stick That's to our parents' place. Yeah. And and also this macho mentality is not enforced by men in all cases. Mm. But many cases it's enforced by the mother. Really? The mother is the one that says uh, to to your sister... Uh, was not my case, but I've seen this many times. Oh, go go bring a plate to your brother. Serve him his meal. Oh, uh, just press his his shirt. He's he's gotta oh. go to work. And then this culture is created by many moms that you deserved to be served by others. Oh, because you're male. Yes. Wow. So that's reinforced by the moms. And then interesting. And then the sons, they worship their their mom. Because why not? You got everybody uh, to serve me. 
and he's not like he's not always this oppressive uh, man macho man mm -hmm. that rules the house is the mom that has uh, influenced the family to treat males in a different and a very special way uh, than than women interesting so i think that's misunderstood from, 100 from this guy have, have you ever heard that before i've, I've never no, heard that in my no. life mm -hmm. yeah so so uh that all gives things, a complete different perspective and on the, on just kind of the way that culture operates and all yeah. the and all the things that that come along with living in the same house uh, i'm not gonna hide it the the number of assaults and, and sexual abuse that runs through through my country mm. most of it is performed by family members Wow. that's the statistic i can yeah. prove it with yeah. numbers and in and, and uh, the uh, bad influence that sometimes it can be to have uh, the uncle and the aunt and and the grandpa mm -hmm. and grandma mm -hmm. living in the same place mm -hmm. all of a sudden you don't have control over your kids because you're trying to apply some discipline mm -hmm. and then comes the grandpa saying oh leave my leave my baby alone mm -hmm. you come here with with grandpa yeah and you're yeah. like man i'm trying to teach some discipline here yeah so so having the whole family in that setup it's oh, just it's, a plethora of issues and it's not mm. it is not uh in many cases it's not positive so it leads my, me to my next one what is the state your opinion state of the evangelical church in mexico Mm, confused, confused. Uh, Neo Calvinism has hit us hard, mm. and I'm all about uh, faith alone, mm -hmm. Christ alone. But I think a lot of people has has uh, been caught up between okay, but do we keep on doing these things, or are we becoming becoming a frozen chosen, like mm -hmm. some yeah. say? And I think that's a, that's got a lot of people confused. And I think fighting over those things on social media is hurting mm. the church so much instead of helping it. Is that a response to, you know, I know uh, from growing up in the West Indies, you know, growing up in, I was spent time in Jamaica, but most of my formative years were in Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, as mm -hmm. we say, liberation mm -hmm. theology mm -hmm. was hitting Central and South America mm -hmm. hard, mm -hmm. followed by prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. And so is the neo-Calvinism kind of a response to those things? Do I you think, think so, because yeah. if you if you uh, study history, we tend to go to the extreme, ah, right? There to you the go. opposite yeah. extreme. So right. the response to, to uh, liberation theology, which hit us hard, mm -hmm. and I can even point to one a hypnal full with Uh, mm -hmm. military kind of music mm -hmm. yep. that go along with Christian yeah. uh, lyrics, uh, that had a huge impact to the point that hymnals were wow. uh, put together yeah, yeah. that represent that type of theology. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, prosperity uh, gospel, which why not? I mean, in a prosperity uh, gospel church, if we can call it mm -hmm. church, you have one dictator yeah. who cannot words, be so. touched. Yeah, preach. Who, who says whatever he wants and gets uh, whatever he wants from people mm -hmm. and no one says anything about it. Why? Because we have been trained up that way in our society. Mm. We, we don't have precedents in most cases. Mm -hmm. We have dictators. And dictators need to be uh, put out of office yeah, through yeah. revolutions. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to do that in a church? Mm -hmm. No one. And when they do that, They just open a can of worms. Gotcha. Everything they were hiding. So the the uh, the prosperity uh, gospel uh, theology fits so well with the way that Latin America uh, mm -hmm. has been uh, ruled yeah. by presidents and by uh, government systems, yeah. which are not Democrat at all. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time in my life. I have a president that I am proud of. Wow. For the first time in my life. I've been ashamed of all the rest because I know what has happened and, I, and I've seen them turn my country apart mm. for decades. And I saw my dad killing himself working as he was a medical doctor besides mm -hmm. pastor at two hospitals. Wow. Just to make ends meet. He's got good genetics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 think yeah, about, yeah. you think about a medical doctor that needs two jobs? Yeah. 
to to support his family and as a co-pastor. Wow. And, and and what's happening? And I used to see him like concerned about making ends meet at the end of the month. And mm. and, and you think and 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 we have some of the richest people in the world mm. are Mexicans. How come? Well, take that into the church and you have a leader who is a dictator who steals the money, who does all kinds of awful things, and no one says nothing because that's mm. the way we have been raised in our yeah. countries. I, I never thought to put those two things together, that you have a, you we're used to authoritarianism, and then you match it with desperation, mm-hmm. where there's poverty, where where a doctor has to have two job, two and a half jobs if he's working as a co-pastor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then how that becomes a breeding ground, and then the pendulum swings, so... I'm grateful there's men like you that are fighting for the truth, mm. you know? So, uh, shift gears. Okay. This is our podcast. We do whatever we want, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Can <laughs> I ask one more before oh, we get oh, to that one? Yeah, of course you can. So my question is the more, so it's just become a lot more popular in America as of recently is kind of this bringing to the light a lot of the moral failures of the American church. Mm-hmm. How much does that impact um, the evangelical church like around the world, but specific, specifically in Mexico? Um, Do you guys see like the impact that the American church, like the things that are happening here, do you see those kind of make their way to into into those churches and the. Yes. We live in a globalized world Hmm. and social media spreads the news all over the place. So we see all of that. We see it all. Hmm. And, and of course there are some people that, you know, react to it and some others that like me, I, I keep an eye on, on American news, not just Christians, but general American news because I come up, I come, come, up, come up here so often, mm-hmm. I need to know what's going on and what's mm-hmm. going on through people's minds. And I work with, with uh, Firebrands. So, uh, yes, we see it all. And sometimes it's, uh, I'm not going to say names, but, you know, top names uh, out there that have had an impact because their books or their radio shows or videos have been uh around our, our context for, for a while, and that has a negative mm-hmm. impact. Yeah. And some others, we just don't know them, yeah. to be honest. Gotcha. So, so I wanted to ask, uh, in the shift gears, what does Santi do for fun that is not reading or being the smartest guy in the room or destroying people in ping pong? <laughs> I watch old cow, Dallas Cowboys games. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> That's well, how fanned it, out you are? It, Old, it, like, reruns of Cowboys games? 70s, 80s, 90s. I'm telling you, he's, he's legit. He's legit. Now, now, the thing is, to find something good in Dallas Cowboys history, you need to you look go back. way back. <laughs> way, way back, you know. So. Well, that's better than the Lions, because yeah. there's, you know, you just got to find Barry Sanders clips. That's yep. all. And not even games, just clips. Just clips. Just just I don't want to see the whole thing. I just yeah. want to see that one Cracks run. up my wife because because she's like, Santa, you're screaming at the screen again. You know the end result of this game. What's <laughs> But honey, uh, he's not covering well. Look. look. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Wow. He's I talking about prevent defense. I realize I Mexico. fist bumped you. Oh, I hate. I think that's from the devil. <laughs> the prevent defense. Yes, prevent defense is from the devil. Yes, I realize I fist bump you for the Dallas Cowboys, but I have the Raiders hat on. Uh, so I probably. Conf- I remember the first. I Facetimed you the other day, and you're like, "What are you? What are you doing?" Yes, sir. Because I'm a Cowboys fan. I love when he wears that hat. Down to the core. I, he I wears that hat because it makes me happy. That's I know the yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got. Yes, this you hat. are like the Raiders yeah. of ministry, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say that from your perspective? Because people hear us say it, but from your perspective. Well, the Raiders back in the day. Back uh, in the day. Not now that they play in Vegas. Right. And ha- they have this fancy stadium. But back in the day with, when they had Rodney Lott, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were like playing, you know, to the limit of the of the rule book. <laughs> That's right. So I love it that this church plays to the limit of the rule book. <laughs> Praise God. Now I love it. You, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. All right, no, I do have one more. I actually have two more. Um, one ser- serious and then one that inquiring minds want to know. So real quick, how can we pray for you and your family right now? Oh. Like somebody's listening and it's like, man, I like that guy. He's my mm-hmm. new favorite bad Mexican, <laughs> you know? So how do we pray for our favorite bad Mexican? Pray for wisdom to guide our, our daughter, for my wife and I to guide our daughter. We're still between homeschooling and regular school because... Uh, pandemic messed up mm-hmm. uh, the social 
right. side of my daughter, right? Mm-hmm. So we need her to socialize, mm-hmm. but we we still are not sure that that's worth putting her in front of people that will teach her many things that we as Christians mm-hmm. uh, cannot stand for. So. And so how old is Esley right now? Three years old. So, Three. so how, how old do you have to be to start producing a podcast? Because that's how you can be socialized. Right, Benjamin? She could probably do it at five. She could probably if she's do it got five. your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Benji, maybe 14. But if, if she's, you I know. I still can't uh, do it. So <laughs> <laughs> We did press record, right? Absolutely. We, <laughs> okay. we press record, Benji. Okay, so my last one. Yeah. Because you do listen to the podcast, yes. you know this. Or I don't know if you know this, but I'm sure you have an opinion. Preference. Cake or pie? If you have a choice, bum, if, there's bum, cake, bum. if there's cake in the conference room or there's pie, probably Grand Travers pie. Probably Company Grand, pie? Yeah, or Trace Cake. Trace, well, I don't want to put Trace Cakes on no, the No, 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 don't do Trace Cake because Trace Cakes is a sponsor. I mean, we can't do that. Dude, no, you're killing me right I'm now. I'm sorry. Tra- a, do you know I how retract. big Tracy's husband Tom is? Yes. <laughs> we wear the same t-shirt size. <laughs> have you ever met Big Tom? No, I you don't. need to. Oh, yes. hopefully he'll be. Yes, he was. Okay. He was there. Yes, the you can time. talk football. Okay. You yes. can talk to prevent yeah, defense. I know who he is. Yes. yes. Cool. So back to the question: cake or pie? Gelatin. And there's and there's not a right 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 or wrong answer. So w- which do you prefer? Gelatin. Ge- he went middle ground. No, not middle ground. That's outside the box. Completely. Yeah. yeah. Jello? You don't have to put it in the oven. Do you say Jello? Yeah. Santi. You would choose jello over well, cake? But you have to know this. Okay. My wife makes this cream cheese gelatin with a cranberry on top of it. Oh, see? It's just, just amazing. Because when you, even you go know the, cream I cheese. I thought jello only came in plastic containers. <laughs> 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 I used to mix it up with a spoon because you could drink it with a straw. That's because no, you're, <laughs> <That's 'cause laughs> you're from the res. That's because you're from the res. Is your brother listening? Uh, what are you talking about? It's because your bad. brother, <laughs> and who's probably listening, he took the good gelatin with the cream cheese and the cranberry <laughs> on top, <laughs> and he gave you a little jello cup and said, <laughs> right. no, that's what mom said yeah. to have. But if I only have those two options, I'll go pie. Mm. Ooh, and remember, God. remember that place you took us, uh, when I was here back in 2017, yeah, uh, for the first time, you took us to a little uh, dining place, mm-hmm. and they had the. It was amazing, up in Traverse. Yeah, was it up in Traverse City. I, I don't think it was Traverse. I think it was closer to Buckley because it okay. was kind of just in the middle of the woods or something. <laughs> okay, yeah, but sounds I think like they Buckley. were. I think they were served. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like <laughs> down the road. <laughs> but they were most likely serving Grand Traverse Pie Company. No free yeah. shout outs. It yeah. was amazing. And if there's anybody yeah. listening that can fulfill our bucket list item together, is Santi and I have listed out a bucket list item that we want to attend a Friday night big time high school football game. Please. A Saturday big time college football game mm-hmm. and then a Sunday NFL game all in the same weekend. Oh. Yeah. We want to go back to back to back. Oh, yeah. That would That's be my amazing. dream next time. Yeah. Whenever someday Santi and I are gonna do it. So, so if there's anybody so listening that, that can like, fulfill so that is dream. Is a big time a big time high school game would that would that be Manistee High School or Kingsley football? Um, uh, both playing each other. Ooh, <laughs> Kingsley versus. Which I don't know Manistee what happened football. last time we scrimmaged them. I don't. Uh, I can't remember. Dude, you're talking so much smack <laughs> right now. There are so many Kingsley people to listen to this. Podcast. Bring it! <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in August, Big Tom. <laughs> and and I'm just gonna say this: we're gonna call that that uh, item on our bucket list. The Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, wow. It's going to be <laughs> the, great. The, it's just so, going to be great. So, so because you know football, uh-huh. what would be your dream college football matchup to see? Ah, like, do you have a, a dream? Because con- I mean, we don't get that much college football down there. Okay. So I don't know that much. So, Britain will provide that one. Yeah. So, like, what is that? What is a college football game oh, for, of, of the Mount of one? Transfiguration football weekend? See, I, I have, I would say, like, going to the big house. Would be incredible to experience. Michigan. Going to Michigan to see any game would be an incredible experience. Going to the cathedral would be Ooh, an incredible experience. Um, Touchdown, Jesus. I think going yeah. to OU about, Texas in Dallas <laughs> would be incredible. That's so you're and, saying your like your team is Oklahoma. Right. So you're saying OU versus their rival away? No. They so every year at the Texas State Fair. That game is played in a stadium there. Oh, so it's a neutral site. Exactly. Oh, mm-hmm. that that would be huge. And it would be w- hot. It would be so hot you might die. But he's from Mexico City, <laughs> bro. But he's a bad Mexican. I would die. No, you no. But he's a bad Mexican. You would both die in the heat. You're not built for that. But my and he's a bad Mexican. Of it is we yeah. could go watch a big time Texas high school football game, OU Texas, and then we're right there for the Cowboys. Cowboys versus who? Philadelphia Santee. Eagles. No oh, brainer. No brainer. I have to confess something to you. Why? Don't say you you like them. I don't like the Eagles. Okay, good. 
but I like Jalen Hurts. Uh, an <laughs> Alabama boy? He played at OU. But he also played at Alabama. And he's one of the best leaders in football. <laughs> and he's got great style. I said it. I like his Alaba- shoes. Jalen... Alabama's like the prevent defense. <laughs> it's of the devil. That's you of said the devil. That's yes. Florida. Florida is of Sorry, the devil. Sorry, Chris Emery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for for all the viewers who don't give a crap about football, please sign off right now. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Benji. We love you, Benji. Benji, do you have a question for Santi? None at all. None? I have a question for Benji. Okay. Earlier, we were talking about Taco Bell. Right now, in this day, we're in Taco Bell drive through and you need us to pick you up something. I know you're not very hungry because you and Britain made an early morning Chick-fil-A run. Yeah. But if you were hungry, we're Christian. what's, and it's not Mexican, but it's like, whatever, it's taco smells. What <laughs> What are you getting right now? Five-layer beefy burrito with Five. no sour cream because it sucks. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so if you want to bless the podcast on Thursdays when we record, just bring some five-layer beef and bean, or beefy bur- burrito, but no yeah. sour cream. For Benji, I would yeah. like sour cream. Yeah, you, you you'd take the same thing with sour, sour cream. cream. Yeah, I'll take one of those crunch wraps with no diva stuff. Just yeah. what whatever. Just Absolutely. bring it the way. Bring it, me, yeah. And yeah. I will say, you guys need to come down to Mexico City, try some real street tacos with me. Praise God, I am Amen. there. Hey, and there's good Texas barbecue. This transfiguration thing's starting to come together oh, in my head. Yeah. We just need somebody. If you would like to donate, uh, you can go to Forge Fort. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can just call the church and ask for Britain and make a donation to his uh, ATM. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Santi, man, thank you. It was fun. Uh, appreciate you. Is there anything, yeah, any lasting you. things you want to say to any of the listeners? Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. And praise God for this church that is doing an amazing job for the kingdom. Thank yeah. you, Santi. John, anything? Nope. It's just, we love you, man. We appreciate you. And mm-hmm. I mean, it. I mean, the worst thing is, is you make some of the best friends and they live so far away <laughs> and in different countries across different borders. Yep. And I'm not trying to be hokey, but I, I'm, I'm just reminded that, you know, there's a part of me that wants to bring everybody here. Right. Mm. But there's also a part of me that knows that uh, we're going to have forever and ever together. Yeah. And that Amen. makes me really happy. Amen. And then we can watch all the football games <laughs> there you go. on rerun. They'll have it recorded <laughs> then. <laughs> Amen. Until next time, Tap Family, this is Benji, Santi, John, and Britton signing off.